All right, today on the table, I have the Charter Arms Bulldog. This is Chamber 44 Special. Uh, trigger Break. Single action, it breaks really clean. Barely any movement in the front sight at all. Double action, not so much. Even going really slow like this, as soon as the trigger breaks, I get quite a bit of jump. Uh, so five shot capacity, it's got on stainless steel. It's a pretty light revolver. Overall look ain't that bad. You even got a little bulldog emblem right there. It says bulldog across there, I think that looks pretty cool. There are some tooling marks on this firearm, some spots, uh, the grip feels pretty good. You get a hard case, trigger lock, lifetime warranty, and you can get these for well under $500, which is pretty cool. Uh, this is a big bore, I wouldn't say a subcompact, but a compact revolver. So don't be surprised, there is going to be some felt recoil. But don't worry, I put a chart together to help you decide if the felt recoil is worth it. Now I've made this chart into a basic graph. More or less how it breaks down is you got your felt recoil on the vertical side, and you got your awesomeness of the firearm on the horizontal side. Now you notice that little triangle at the beginning. If it's not at a certain point of awesomeness, for a handgun, no matter how low the felt recoil is, there's got to be something for me to want to buy it. So anything that lands in there, I say avoid. Now as you notice on the felt recoil, 500 in Smith & Western is way, way above the no-go line. And yes, you could probably load your own ammo or buy low recoil ammo, but then what's the point? Why have that big heavy revolver for something that doesn't pack a huge punch? Now 454 Kasula that's right below the goal line. A 454 Casula does have quite a bit of recoil, but it's manageable. You're not gonna be like when you shoot a 500 Smith & Wesson, you know, blow up some pumpkins, make a YouTube video, go home and ice your hand. You can manage the 454 Casula. Now, the biggest advantage why it's below the no goal line is because you can also chamber 45 Long Colt in there, which is basically like the old inversion of a 45 ACP when it comes to recoil. They're really ballistically similar, pretty much use the same bullet. Now, 9mm and 45 they're really similar in recoil and they're clearly below the goal line and they're pretty far on the awesome side because they have a lot of platforms that really rock now the reason i group 9 millimeter and 45 together is because they both have a definitive advantage a 9 millimeter is a really small bullet so you can hold a lot of ammo a 45 flies subsonic so therefore you can run a suppressor without having to buy special ammo so we're talking about off the shelf ammunition here good to go serves two really good purposes now 40 is also similar in recoil but it's a lot closer to the no goal line. The reason I put it there is because it doesn't have a definitive advantage. It doesn't hold a lot of extra rounds, and you can't. It flies supersonic, so you can run a suppressor, but it's not going to be as quiet as a 45. But that's basically how I break my scale down and decide if I want to purchase a handgun or not. You also know 22, even though it's got like no felt recoil, it's way in the little triangle no go box. That's because 22s are just unreliable in handguns, as far as my experience. You never know if you're going to have a jam, or if that round's going to fire. You're constantly clearing malfunctions. There are some pretty good handguns, like, uh, what is it, the Ruger Mark III, I believe it's called, and the Browning Benchmark. But to me, those guns just don't look cool, unless you have the Ruger with the built-in suppressor, but due to current laws, you know, that's not really an option, unless you do all the tag stamp and stuff. Hopefully that'll change, and then I will move 22 into the go box. Now the platform does make a difference where the caliber is placed in my chart. Like for example, a 357 and a revolver, yeah it's kind of cool, it's got low recoil, it's pretty good ballistically, so you know it'll plot right there. Now a 357 and say a semi-automatic package, now it'll plot way more over on the awesome side. So the platform does make a difference, and that's why the Bulldog I like because it's a 44 Special. Now a 44 Special and a large frame revolver to me wouldn't be that cool. But in the small frame revolver, I do like it. Now that we've examined the chart and you can make a decision on this revolver, one of the things I don't like about it, I actually don't like about any of the Charter Arms, is the position of the cylinder release. To me, it's too close to the cylinder. Like when I'm shooting it, I come up, I hit it, and this is just where my thumb wants to be. It puts it right in the way of this thing. Little nub right there. So that's constantly hitting me into the thumb. And it 
comes off as quite annoying to me. Now you can move your thumb back to like right there it won't be a problem but to me I just can't get a good grip on it because this little screw this stays still just this lever up here moves so my thumb wants to go more right in there even right there it's just grazing the tip of my thumb and I'm trying to keep it back but leave in the comments below if you own this revolver what do you think about it oh and don't forget to subscribe